um, so so we'll um, we'll go over just kind of high level what's going on, what what to expect, and what some of the sprints are, and then um, give people a chance to get get to know each other, get uh, into groups, and you know start uh, start in on it. So um, the I guess first things first. Um, Absolutely, you can join on Slack. Um, we have uh, the, the general sprint uh, channel, and then we also have the uh, channel for the women's sprint. Um, and I, I can't speak for the women's sprint, but I'm pretty confident that you can uh, post some issues in either one and, uh, and folks will be happy to help. Um, so we have a couple of um, kind of streams this year. Uh, the women's sprint, the documentation sprint, and then the science sprints. And uh, so if someone would like to do the, the high level for the women's sprint. Yep, I will step in here, Andrew. Um, okay. Hi everyone, I'm Megan Halibisky. I am with Digital Earth Africa. And um, just first wanna welcome everyone to this project pitch session. We are so excited for this women's sprint. This is the effort um, of many different groups of women who are focused on working to amplify and increase the voices of women in the field of earth observation. So we're really excited about this event. Um, for our women's sprint, we have four projects that we set out for our project pitches with um, designated project leads. I'm gonna hand it over to them here shortly. Um, and then if you have your own idea, please feel free to come out to our breakout room and pitch your own idea to, to the Women's Sprint. I do wanna note that um, for the Women's Sprint, uh, you know, uh, you're welcome to join the Women's Sprint, but if you want to join the, the general event, that's open to you too. So it's really up to you how you want to engage um, for this conference. So um, maybe we could go to the next slide, Andrew. Okay, so here are our four um, project ideas. And I think rather than just read them off here, I'm gonna um, hand it over to Kate Fickus for our first uh, project pitch from Ladies of Landsat. All right, can you go to the next slide, please? Thanks, Megan. Uh, so this was a collaborative idea with uh, Megan and Fong. Megan and I have worked on wetlands and continue to work on wetlands together. And this is in the context of wetlands, but it could be any, any landscape really. Um, and really it's building a tool. Um, I have one that I've built in Earth Engine and translating it to the Open Data Cube where um, really simple concept, just displaying all available data for a given sensor, um, the time series here I have Landsat. Uh, with the possibility of incorporating uh, Sentinel-2 as well. Um, but, you know, looking at different um, vegetation and spectral indices. So I have found this tool extremely useful when starting to scope a project, uh, wanting to know what spectral indices to use, how different optical bands might uh, reflect over time, especially pertinent for wetlands, which behave really erratically over time, um, intra and interannually. Uh, and then the, the next part of it, which I think is ambitious, but hopefully could even be continued after, sorry, that's my budgie in the background, um, could be continued afterwards, um, is this concept of mapping spectral temporal features um, in wetlands. So uh, that's doing a type of classification and delineation of wetlands without even having to run models, uh, which I think is really useful to a lot of folks here, especially I'm hoping there are some beginners that this would be really useful for. So Megan indicated there's some um, great wetland systems in Africa that this would be really applicable to. Um, so Fong has graciously, uh, neither Megan nor myself has used Open Data Cube. Um, and so Fong has graciously um, volunteered to help us translate it. And then um, we'll work on seeing if we can get this going. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> All right, Andrew, next slide. All right, this one uh, next up here is Edward. Edward, are you on the line? Yes, hello everyone. 
my name is Edward Buama, and I'm an hour closely with Megan also. And on this sprint, we'll be actually working on connecting storytelling using the Earth Navigation Map. Uh, for this particular sprint, <clears throat> we will actually we will actually be focusing on the Digital Earth Africa Platform Map, which we use it to create various storylines from water observation to uh, to forest monitoring and organization. This platform actually gives us access to Landsat, Sentinel, and other products that are available for its usage. And we, we will be happy to have all of you there to come and see how best you can actually use this platform without actually going through coding, by just click and drop to create a storyline and even share it with others. And also not only that, you can also compare different uh, images to see what has happened over the years. So we'll be expecting you at our end to talk more about the digital letter platform and how you can use it to create maps. Thank you. Thanks, Edward. Um, Edward is our technical expert in Africa and Ghana. So he's able to give the um, technical support for this team, for folks who choose this. And this is a great project for folks that um, maybe are new to earth observation or coding. And there is a possibility to expand on the storytelling by um, stepping into using the Digital Earth Africa sandbox. So Edward can help with that as well. All right, next one. Okay, is Emily or Sarah here? Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm Sarah Miller. Um, I'll be the lead for this project. Um, so first of all, a little bit of background. We are working on mapping and monitoring small water bodies. Um, Servier has a tool for it already implemented in West Africa, which is that top image there. And there's a link to it as well if you're interested. Um, and it kind of uses satellite indices such as the normalized difference water index to kind of map the sw small water bodies and tell like how large the water bodies are compared to normal for that region. So we are working to implement and evaluate this tool in the Eastern and Southern Africa region as well. Um, and during this workshop, we're hoping to kind of get some collaborations with that, with Digital Earth Africa, um, and with the Open Data Cube, because right now this is all implemented in Google Earth Engine. And I've also linked a few publications on there in case anyone is interested in learning more about it. So thank you. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Ah, this project is led by Negan, and she is um, with Geosciences Australia. So I'll just quickly give a an overview of this project in her place. So this is really a project for folks who are really interested in using SAR data and are really keen to try the Digital Earth Africa Sentinel-1 uh, collection for monitoring ship traffic. So um, this project will really, while it can monitor ship traffic you know, throughout time, I think the goal um, is to be more general it will focus on really that shipping fiasco that we had back in March, 2021, and looking at how ships backed up and um, detecting and counting and track, tracking ships um, because of this event. Um, and this project could be um, a good one for intermediate advanced users who want to think about how to use our imagery um, to detect count shipping vessels, integrate it in the OD, use it for the ODC, um, and monitor it for monitor ships in, in um, northern eastern Africa. And I really can't say too much more about that. <laughs> All right, thanks. I think that's it for the women's sprint. All right. Well, thank you. Um, that that's such a, a good uh, variety of topics, and also. Um, fits with, with so many different levels of, of experience. Um, it's, it's really good. And really all of those topics are things that I've encountered in my own experience where, you know, people want to do, I mean, even the, the, the kind of specific ship monitoring, I mean, uh, ship tracking is, you know, it's a very interesting area that people have a need for. So um, thanks for that. Uh, so the next um, 
sprint area is the documentation sprint. Um, and uh, I've got enough stuff on my screen that I can't read this and I'm not gonna waste your time doing it. Um, but uh, documentation is um, kind of more important than a lot of us uh, give it you know, credit for. Uh, not only is it you know that technical reference, but it also a lot of times is is where is is how people get introduced to a project and 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 how they get started and their very first impression. You know, and first impressions are important. And um, uh, I'm a big believer in lowering barriers to entry where possible. And so uh, making it easy for people to get started with the, the Open Data Cube is just it's it's very important uh, it, to kind of maintain that um, expanding, thriving community that we've been experiencing. So um, the um, opportunity for the, for the documentation sprint is to, um, to be able to go in and up, update um, documentation um, spot issues. Even if you don't know the fix, you know, you can do this, um, uh, you know, raise, raise an issue and, um, uh, it, you know, if you are able to fix it and, you know, during the sprint, um, you can assign it to yourself um, and then make a pull request and, and all of that. So um, the exact logistics of it, we, we can get into, but um, the documentation sprint is, is really very important and I hope folks are interested. Is there anybody here who has anything to say specific about the documentation sprint? I don't think so, but beyond that? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, so the, um, the science sprints, um, you know, in, in these, uh, you know, it's very interesting. They're kind of based on practical application and uh, you can um, either learn how to use the data cube to address a real world problem or you know you can be part of developing a new solution that uses the data cube to address a real world problem, and um, so there are a number of um, pitches that already exist, and um, the the those are kind of this beginner sprint. Then there's the use case notebooks. There's web map visualization webinar. There's time series forecasting and machine learning. Uh, I think machine learning is still there. So um, let's kind of walk through those really quickly. Um, the beginner sprint, which actually I may try and run through myself as well. Do we have somebody who wants to cover that? Uh, yeah, I can cover that, Andrew. Okay. Uh, so the beginner sprint is basically a way to get it together as a group and go through a six session training course that was developed for Digital Earth Africa. So it goes through the basics of, if you're new to programming, if you're new to Earth observation data, uh, this is the place to, to get, get started. Um, so it'll show you how to, the, the maps that are part of Digital Earth Africa, and then getting you into the Python sandbox. So you can do some, some pretty interesting, but sort of entry level analysis on the data. Um, so we recommend trying out the first four sessions. You can skip the early ones if you find them a bit too easy. Uh, and that'll get you up to speed on um, doing basic analysis in the sandbox. Um, after that, you can go into sessions five and six, which are looking at some use cases, or you can join a group or stick with your study group and come up with a use case of your own, which Andrew's going to talk about next. And, and how, how do people get into the, the groups if, if uh, they, they want to walk through the, the training together? That's a good question. So I think we had a breakout session in when we ran this last time. I'm not sure if that's going to be set up for this. Um, yep. Yes, it is. Maybe? Cool. Okay. So at the end of, at the end of this, um, presentation, we'll activate the breakout room section uh, feature. You can then jump into the room that matches up the sprint you want to do. And that's where we'll be forming teams and uh, getting to know each other. 
Okay. Yep. And, and this is kind of true for all of these. That's the way to, to go and get involved and join a group. And I believe it is the case. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, that, uh, it, you know, it's, it's certainly not binding when you go into one of these rooms. I think you can switch between rooms and kind of have some conversation and see what's going on. Um, and certainly you can, you know, jump projects later. Um, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, great. Great. All right. Uh, oops. Focus. There we go. Um, so the um, use case notebooks. Do do we have somebody for that? Andrew, uh, are you? I I can handle this one as well. Um, so this is where we want you to bring a topic that's um, that you're interested in, in. In so pose a problem that in your area you want to know about. Uh, change in the land. Um, so if land clearing has been happening um, or you want to work out where cropping is happening. Um, so come up with a topic. Uh, we've got both the, the sandboxes for Digital Earth Australia and Digital Earth Africa available to us. Um, so anywhere on those two continents. Um, and so what we'll do here is uh, we'll get everyone that wants to be part of it, if you don't already, to sign up to GitHub. Um, you can go to this link and we'll be posting a link to this slide deck. Um, we'll be emailing around this slide deck um, after the presentations. Um, so you can go to the link that's there, create a new issue, label it as use case, and then describe your proposal. Um, and then in the breakout rooms, we'll be able to get people to um, form groups around these. Um, so just if you don't have an idea, that's okay. You can still come in, grab hold of someone that does have an idea, and then as a group over the next three days, work out how much time you can put into it um, and come up with a use case, uh, come up with a notebook that demonstrates um, what you're able to do with the satellite data. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. And um, thanks, Andrew. And um, you mentioned the, um, uh, <laughs> the sandboxes. Uh, yeah, there was a question in the, uh, the previous session um, uh, from, from a, a student who was asking how to get started. And, um, you know, participating this week is uh, a good start uh, that, that that person's already on, on track for. But uh, the, the, the sandboxes and the access to those and the training materials that's available it's a great way to get started without having to download Open Data Cube, install it, and um, configure it, ingest data, all of the, the, you know, those steps that sort of are required to get started. Sandbox, you're just, you just sign up and you're ready to go. So um, I'm really glad you mentioned that because that's it's such a good opportunity. Uh, all right, uh, that's enough of Andrew. Now on to Andrew. So we've also got a web map visualization tool. And Paul, if you're online, would you like to talk about this one? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so DataCube AWS is the web service layer that sits between the ODC and, and the web browser to make the um, DE Africa and DE Australia uh, web maps work. Um, if you've worked in DataCube land, you know that it's been quite difficult to get new styles into, um, into AWS, but there's now a standalone library, so you can create your own AWS styles and prototype them and see what they look like in Sandbox uh, and fine tune them a bit. And so you've got a, a working style to hand over to the, um, to the web service managers at your respective organization. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, um, yeah, come along. We, you, there's all sorts of cool visualizations you can do. Um, so I'm happy to help you do that. Cool. Thanks a lot, Paul. Um, and I think the Zoom links to these sessions will get uh, mailed around to everyone at some point. Yeah, so we'll do a morning session for Europe, for sort of Australia and America, and then an evening session for Europe and Africa. and. Um, it'll be a good complement to whatever else you're doing over the conference. Cool. Thanks, Paul. And we have chat online. 
Yes, I'm here, Andrew. Thanks, Chad. Take it away. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so yeah, this sprint is um, uh, it, it's built around the idea that you know the what we what we currently do with the Open Data Cube is map environmental change, but often by the time that environmental change has happened, it's not um, that useful for this for the decision makers. So the point of this um, this sprint is to look into methods for forecasting environmental change. Uh, so to be specific about it, we want to build um, possibly two uh, notebooks. One um, will be a relatively straightforward one that'll take some kind of input like a polygon that might um, encompass a, um, a paddock or a, or a section of forest or something like that and, um, and do a, a um, auto regression on that to make a short term prediction about where something like NDVI is heading over the next um, you know, maybe four week interval or something like that. And then another notebook will be a bit more exploratory um, and that'll be looking into um, a more advanced kind of prediction using um, a library called ML Forecast, which is this new um, Dask backed um, machine learning time series forecasting Python library. Um, so we want to see if we can use something like some stuff like surface wetness and rainfall and, and um, root zone wetness to, um, to predict um, NDVI into the future, basically. Um, and I've also put there that we can also explore some other methods, the ones that uh, might fail and report on those too. So it should hopefully inform future efforts to try and move towards things like ecological forecasting, which I see as the kind of next step in um, satellite remote sensing. So if you're interested, um, come and find me. Um, it's probably one that's not for the faint hearted. So we're need to have a bit of statistical background and, and a bit of experience with using X-Array for time series analysis, but um, also happy for, for to train people up as well. So come along. Thanks. All right, I think that's that. Those are both look really interesting. I, I, I think I might not be up for uh, for Chad's. I might be a little too faint of heart, but uh, I'm, I'm- So we've also got a web map visualization tool. Yes, we do. <laughs> Oh, if you're online. Yes, um, but uh, but but Paul's, I may very well try and join. It sounds very interesting, um, and um, uh, all that. So finally, we do have this um, this machine learning sprint. I believe is still out there. And Andrew, sorry, are, are we still looking for kind of leaders in this and topics? What's the status of this? Uh, so this is one that was um, proposed, uh, someone wanted to do um, more machine learning um, and then Chad's, Chad's proposal came in. So I think, I think at this stage, if you're interested in machine learning, um, joining in Chad's team would be the way to go. Um, and there's, there's also a developer um, sprint that we haven't been advertising because we, the, um, we convinced the core developers that they should join the documentation sprint because there's quite a bit of stuff that only they know. Um, but I, I saw we've got some people from Element 84 on the, the line that's, I'm not gonna get you to talk right now, but um, there is being able to join in and do things like um, explore how Stack and Open Data Cube can work. Um, so we'll get the development team um, available to talk to, to anyone who's interested in that this week. And is the um, uh, GitHub the, the best place to kind of connect on that or is that a, a, a Slack thing or both? Uh, probably, probably Slack. Okay. All right, and um, yeah, also again, anything can be suggested um, and um, uh, you don't have to do it right here, right now. Um, you can, you know, go and submit those ideas and, um, you know, who knows? Um, uh, anything can catch on, uh, even if it's the AI machine learning, who knows? Um, so there's plenty of room for, um, for, for new ideas. And, you know, of course, um, this week is the chance where a lot of us actually get some kind of on the clock ability to work on this, but um, you know, people uh, are always developing and always interesting. So uh, interested in in, in um, improving the ODC and adding features and functionality and doing new cool things. So 
even if something doesn't get done this week, that, that doesn't mean that it's, that it's not going to get done or that there's no interest. Um, so, so please, any ideas, um, uh, put them forward. Um, so I believe that we are going to, um, uh, split off into um, these, you know, side rooms at the end of this session, and you can kind of start working on groups um, and also look at uh, other groups that have also formed. And the procedure here, I guess, is um, to, on GitHub, um, add names to the, um, uh, the text for, uh, for the issue that describes your, your uh, target. And, um, then it's kind of kind of up to groups to work out, you know, the workflow that makes sense for them. Um, we we have a couple of options um, available that that we're trying to to help people, um, but there's no no problem with establishing your own. Um, you can set up your time zones, and you know, for some of these, there may be people in different parts of the world, and and you may be able to do a you know day shift and night shift kind of thing, whatever. So. Um, it is uh, important to be aware that we'll kind of want to um, have some 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 deliverables, I guess. Some you know, let's um, maybe you know do some some check ins and status updates, and then at the end, hopefully, um, have a, a final product. And it doesn't have to be a, a polished, beautiful product. It doesn't even have to be finished. But that's the goal, and so it's very helpful to kind of set up a schedule for what will be developed. Um, so then, yep, by the end of the week, um, target is to submit a pull request. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't go into a repo, it doesn't count. Um, I'm uh, joking, it's still a very good experience, but, um, and then also add a slide uh, for your team. And toward, toward the end of the, the conference, we'll, we'll go through and we'll, uh, go over those slides and, and um, kind of show off the work that's been accomplished. So again, um, you know, there are, Slack is really one of the, the easiest and best ways to get help. Um, and then also uh, for the sprints, the um, uh, GitHub, um, there's uh, good information there. So I believe that is, yeah, that looks like the last, um, slide so unless i've missed something and somebody wants to to get it in i think it's time to split up